Gentlemen, welcome to the Man Corps. Today's episode is going to be around the list of greats and those who have gone before you in success in NOFAP and semen retention. So if you are new here, the Man Corps is a community built for men that are digging to their core to find out what it is that they really want, who it is that they really want to become. So please consider subscribing. We would love to have you as a part of the community to help build better men for the future. As I mentioned at the top of the video, today's topic is going to be around NOFAP and semen retention, but a list of the greats who have gone before us and going back as far as 2000 years ago to hear the advice of some of the most successful people, the most noteworthy, the most famous, the most, uh, you know, the most well-known people who have accomplished such great heights in their mission, in their purpose, and it's what we all know them for. And, you know, I, I've come to this channel quite a bit and, and I've, you know, shared a lot about my own experience and you guys have shared your experience, which uh, please continue to do that. That's, that's of huge value. Um, but, you know, what's important is that, you know, if we're going to become successful, most people, what they do is that they, we always look forward and we're always thinking about what's coming and that is very important. Uh, but the thing about success is that instead of always looking forward, it's important that we look back and see, you know, and study the people that have gone before us and who have been successful. So as Tony Robbins says, very famously, success leaves clues. So, you know, if we have people that we admire in their craft or their sport or their, you know, business, we should study or, you know, look into or find out more about that person to find out what made them tick, to figure out, you know, what it is that motivated them, what, what it is that, you know, kept them on their mission, on their purpose, uh, what inspired them, what motivated them. And the list that I'm going to go through here with you today is a list of people that we all pretty much know, and they have accomplished great heights and, you know, they have, they have uh, either quotes or sayings or, you know, they really firmly believe they held a firm belief in the power and the focus and the benefits and just the, the incredible benefits that we all experience, uh, but for themselves on NOFAP and semen retention. So I have a list here and it's uh, something I'm gonna go through throughout the video. So I'm gonna, lay, I'm gonna name off uh, you know, the notable person, the famous person, and then I'm gonna read off some, you know, some different quotes and different sayings that they have about NOFAP and semen retention. Um, please share your comments, your feedback in the comment section below. I'd love to hear uh, if you guys have anybody to add to the list. But uh, again, you, we're just going to go through here. So I'm going to shift over to these notes so that way you know I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not intentionally looking away from you. It's just, just so that you guys know that I'm looking at these notes here. Okay, so from the very first, from the top of the list. So again, if, you, if, if you've not seen some of the NoFab and Seamer Retention videos that I've, that I've been posting, you know, the, the benefits that we've all experienced is increased energy, increased focus, better determination, better sleep, better confidence, uh, better eye contact, you know, you're calmer, uh, you know, just the mental and the physical benefits for men are just, they're outstanding. I can't, I can't even, I can't state that enough. Uh, so definitely go back and watch some of them if you have not yet. I'll link some of them uh, in the cards here, but you know, the, the list of benefits and the inspiration, it just goes, it goes to great heights. And, you know, if we, if we look at those who have gone before us, uh, it's it's important that we understand that they also did this, and this is how you know they also found success. So, from the very first top of the video, we have Sigmund Freud. Now, I don't know if who you'd be without knowing about you know Sigmund Freud, but he is you know a psychologist and the founder of psychoanalysis. So he's like the foremost person in you know, therapy or psychoanalysis or psychology. He's just, you know, he's, he's really who we look to in terms of the, the psychology space as kind of being the, the king. He's like the, uh, the Steve Jobs of psychology, if you will, or the, um, you know, he's just like the leader. Like there's just nobody that did it better or longer ago than he did and who was more comprehensive. And, you know, Freud, it says that Freud held the opinion based on his personal experience 
and his observation that sexual activity was incompatible with accomplishing any great work. Interesting. Since he felt that the great work of creating and establish, establishing psychotherapy was his destiny, mission, destiny, purpose, he told his wife they could no longer experience or engage in sexual relations. Indeed, from about the age of 40 until his death, Freud was absolutely celibate, crazy, in order to sublimate the libido for the creative purposes, according to his biographer. So just, I mean, that right there really sums it up. I mean, this is a guy that's married, that has a mission and a purpose that says, hey, Mrs. Freud, whatever her name is, we, we've got to like stop the sexual activity because I have this mission and purpose to serve and to uh, deliver on this. And these, you know, this is my choice. This is what we're doing. And now we know him as being, you know, the most famous psychoanalysis or, or most famous uh, psychology uh, icon of, uh, of all time. So that's, that's a huge one. I mean, you know, there's some really heavy hitters in this list. I'd be shocked if you're not going to know some of these people. Um, they're going to be people from all different fields, all different sports, all different, um, you know, businesses, entrepreneurship. So we're going to cover it all here. The next one is Mike Tyson. Now, he was a heavyweight uh, title, a uh, heavyweight boxer for most of the 90s. I mean, he was a fucking animal. Like, he's just unheard of, right? Um, so this is what he had to say about it. I never knew that conquering so many women takes so much more from you than it adds so much to you. I always read that the great fighters never had sex before fights. And I was a young kid and wanted to be the youngest heavyweight champion in the world. That's my mission. So I restrained myself from sex for around five years. Fuck. Why do we know Mike Tyson? Why do we know Sigmund Freud? You can't ignore that those two cases right there are, are prominent cases in why we actually know them. So that's, that's huge. Uh, the next one is a very similar case in Muhammad Ali. So before um, you know Mike Tyson, this is probably who Mike Tyson saw this advice from before because he was probably studying Muhammad Ali, who was also a boxing legend, a heavyweight uh, boxing legend. This is what Muhammad Ali had to say. There's a kid just come down here named Cassius Clay. Now Cassius Clay, is, that's his original name. Muhammad Ali was um, not his original name. Cass, uh, Cassius Clay was his real name. There's a kid just come down here named Cassius Clay. If you bet on him every time he fights, you'll be a rich man. It's my mission. That's my purpose. Because he won't lose a single fight. I believe his thing is sexual control. And he's got it. Any kid who can control his sex can win the title. I believe it. So that is a quote directly from Muhammad Ali. I mean, wow. That's... That again, it really sums it up. That is a guy on a mission to be the number one title fighter who says, this is what I'm going to do and I believe it to my core. I absolutely believe it. This is, this is something that is my foundation. This is, these are my principles. This is what I'm doing. Being convinced, conviction, right? So incredible. Three cases that are, that are, that if, I mean, right there, that should, that should really get you started. But if that has not motivated you yet, we have a lot more here. So the next one is Sir Isaac Newton, a scientist, mathematician, um, a lifelong celibate. Most people don't know that. He, he was believed to have died a virgin. I mean, that's just, I'm sure to most people, that probably sounds like fucking prison. But this is what he had to say. The way to chastity is not to struggle with the inc incontinent thoughts, but to avert the thoughts by some employment or by reading or by meditating or by other things. 
So what is he, what is he saying by that? So that's a quote from him. And again, this is a long time ago. So it's kind of like, you know, it's a little off, but the translation there is that the struggle that you have with your temptations only goes up when you continue to fap or not retain semen. Okay. So what he's saying, but to avert those thoughts. So, you know, restrain yourself and use that energy. We've talked about channeling that energy. Um, transmutation is what it's called. To, to, to channel those into other efforts. Whether that be in your job, in your mission, if you need to meditate, read, or by other things. So it's, it's, it's using that energy to serve a purpose or to serve people or to serve in a, a job or something rather than to just expel it and, and give in to the temptation. So, you know, again, I don't really know a ton about, you know, sir. I mean, he was the law of gravity, of course. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious. But, you know, Sir Isaac Newton is, I, I suppose if you're, you know, heavy in the science and math game, which you could look at my uh, transcripts. I didn't do very well in those classes. But, um, you know, I, I don't think that that limits my ability to understand, you know, the level of depth and understanding that he had around what that energy did for him and, you know, how he became, you know, such an icon in, in that space. Uh, next, moving on, is Nikola Tesla, okay? So we know Tesla because of the, you know, the famous company and um, the cars that they make and all the crazy scientific and, and space shit that they're doing. Um, it's actually named after Nikola Tesla, who was invent an inventor of so many things, but doesn't get fucking credit. Uh, you can read about him, you know, aside from this video. But if you if you actually learn in or if you actually dig into and, and understand the biography of Tesla, he's actually came up with like a lot of fucking inventions and didn't even get credit for him. But anyway, that's beside the point. I digress. Okay, Nikola Tesla. So he's a legendary scientist and an inventor. He believed that celibacy spurred the brain. Now, we've talked about what nofap and semen retention has on its effects to the brain, right? One of Tesla's biographers, Kenneth Sweezy, a journalist who remained co close to Tesla in his declining years, called Tesla an absolute celibate and confirmed that he rarely slept. Energy you know, retention and channeling that to, you know, his inventions and his science, what his practice, uh, you know, though we don't necessarily know him for all the inventions that he has, Tesla is not a name that we, we forget. Um, it, it's certainly something that, that we know. Uh, and, it, and he actually gets credit for a lot in that, in, um, in, in the company. So, you know, I, those are two very famous, you know, scientists and, and inventors and, and mathematicians. We've, we've done uh, psychology leaders. We've done science and math leaders. We've done athletic leaders. Uh, now let's move into probably the most famous entrepreneur of all time. And that would be Steve Jobs. So I don't, if you're holding an iPhone or an iPad or you're watching this on a Mac, um, I'd be shocked if anybody watching this video does not know who Steve Jobs is. He's the founder of Apple. Um, you know, he's just, he's revered, right? Uh, I'm actually filming this video on one of his devices. So anyway, this is Steve Jobs quote. Our birth control method up to the point, up, up to that point was Steve's coitus interruptus, also called the pullout method. So this is what guy, oh, I'm going to pull out, right? which for him was about his conserving his energy for work. So that the, the, the coitus interruptus and also called the pullout method doesn't mean pulling out and then releasing because you're trying not to get the girl pregnant. What that means is pulling out and then still retaining, so not expelling. That's really fucking hard to do. I, I've never tried it, but I can imagine that that would be extremely, extremely hard to do. So again, you know, that is, that, that is really facing temptation on because he's actually having sex. 
But at the point that he is about to expel, he backs off or pulls out and then retains it so that he can, again, use that into, you know, other areas of his work, of his business, uh, building Apple. Um, he explained that he didn't want to climax so he could build power and wealth by conserving one's vital energies. That a quote and directly from his former girlfriend, Chris Ann Brennan and her book. So, I mean, Jesus, that again, right there, another, another prime example of why it's so important, why it's so vital and the things that it does for us. I, those six that we just went through, you know, that's, that's a lot. And there's, there's even more here. So, um, the next one is going to be, we're going to get into so like some, some philosophers and I've covered some videos on Greek philosophy, which I've been getting into. I highly recommend to highly recommend it. Um, and some more of the spiritual side of, of people. So, uh, the next one is Plato, right? He is a Greek philosopher, famous Greek philosopher, one of the most famous. And this is what Plato had to say. So Plato's dialogue stresses the intellect over the physical because of the risk of the slavish dependent on physical desires. In this context, Plato recommends reduced erotic engagement to better exercise and control the mind. Interesting. In other words, Sexual activity is only detrimental only insofar as it distracts from intellectual endeavors. This is all directly correlated to brain, right? Um, you know, the, the power and, and everything that, that, that you're retraining and, and rewiring your brain um, on NoFap and semen retention. So, fucking Greek philosopher here. We still quote his things 2,000 years, uh, from 2,000 years ago. Plato praises the exemplary self-control, citing famous athlete, I can't even pronounce that, who had possessed in his soul such art and such courage mixed with moderation that he never touched a woman during the entire time of his training. So just like Mike Tyson, I, I'm gonna stave off of it for, uh, you know, during my time or before my fights, while I'm training, while, I'm, while I wanna become the best. Plato suggests that by consciously choosing to control sexual desires, an individual liberates the mind to better study virtue. I mean, uh, right there too, the, you know, that's another one. A lot of what he just said there is, is why I'm, I'm, I've created this channel. You know, my, my best videos, my most performing, my highest activity videos on this channel are on the NoFap and semen retention. And I think that's because a lot of people are interested in it. They're, they're finding out about it and they are seeing benefits from it. And um, they're also finding out that apart from the physical and mental, like it just makes you a better, more purposeful, intentional and uh, energetic, vibrant man. Um, it, it's such a huge value to your life. I, I can't, can't stress it enough. All right. So moving on is the Dalai Lama. Okay. Didn't see that one coming. Didn't know that he had problems with, um, you know, retaining, uh, his semen and, and, and fapping. I'm sure it's probably not that, but like, you know, at the end of the day, the Dalai Lama is a man. So it's like, he, it's not like he's, he may be highly spiritual, but he's still, you know, Genetically, he's a man. So like he still has de temptations, desires. That's just how we're wired, right? But this is what he, now he's the a spiritual leader, a, a, the Tibetan leader. Like, you know, the Dalai Lama is kind of, you know, he's like the religious icon, you know, uh, or the spiritual icon, I should say. Now, this is what the Dalai Lama had to say. Sexual pressure, sexual desire, actually, I think is short period satisfaction and often that leads to more complication. So again, this stuff works against you in the long term and it stacks against you in the long term. So you get addicted to it. You start rewiring your brain to think it's normal. You start training your body and your and your body's responses to think that this is normal, that you should always be doing this, 
So it becomes a habit, right? And it becomes a very big complication. It affects every area of your life, your health, your relationships, uh, everything. It just, it, it permeates into every aspect of a man's life. And, you know, listen to the spiritual leader himself. A short period satisfaction often that leads to more complication. Do it once, twice, three times, pretty soon, fuck, it's gotten out of control and, you know, it's, it's became a problem, right? So here's another one. Now we're going to move into some famous musicians. This is probably going to shock a lot of you guys, if it hasn't already. So Miles Davis, who is a jazz legend, right? Uh, this is what Miles Davis had to say. You can't come, then fight or play. You can't do it. When I get ready to come, I come. But I do not come and play. So this is in an interview that he's doing. Interviewer. Explain that in layman's terms. And this is what he, how he responded. Ask Muhammad Ali. We covered him. He couldn't even whip me. Would you? So this is the interviewer. Would you fight Muhammad Ali under those conditions to prove your point? Davis's response. You're goddamn right I'd fight him. But he's got to promise to fuck first. If he ain't going to fuck, I ain't going to fight. You give up all your energy when you come. I mean, you give up all of it. So, if you're going to fuck before a gig, how are you going to give something when it's time to really hit? Wow. That's, that's a huge statement. He's referring to somebody that we've already talked about. And that also that Miles Davis was willing to go into the ring with Muhammad Ali, provided Muhammad Ali had fucked before he got in the ring. Very big difference in size and intimidation and experience in terms of, you know, boxing prowess, if you will, uh, between Miles Davis and Muhammad Ali. But that says a lot. It says a fuckload, actually. All right. So here's the next one. Ka uh, Kanye West. Okay. Okay. So this is a quote from him and it was during an interview. So it says, this is from Kanye. People ask me a lot about my drive. I think it comes from like having sexual addiction at a young age. Most, and most men this age, they, they have that because porn is so accessible, right? And we're always looking for the quick fix. He says, look at the drive that people have to get sex. I mean, that's men, right? We're all fucking motivated, whether it be money or, you know, things or women. That's just, you know, we're always doing shit to, to try and get laid. To dress like this and get a haircut like that and to be in the club freezing cold at 3 a.m., the places they go to pick up a girl. If you can focus the energy into something valuable, put that into work ethic. I mean, well, Jesus, like Kanye West, he's Fucking probably one of the best rappers. He's not my, my taste, but, you know, he does have a lot of energy. He does have a lot of drive. He's known for being very motivational, inspirational, and, and very, you know, like a, a, somebody who works his ass off. He's achieved incredible success. Incredible. So, you know, there you're hearing it from somebody in the music industry. Here's another one. 50 Cent. Another one who was very big in the early 2000s. Masturbation is a sin. You stop right now, you fool. God is watching you. <laughs> Step one, stop masturbating. To avoid the urge, stop going to porn sites. Two, make a conscious decision not to turn your head after people walk to you. Mm, that's a little different. Three, do, do not go to strip clubs. Four, do not look at lust-filled magazines, and this includes content. So like, you know, the Instagram models that you're following on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whatever, like, you know, that's, that, that applies to that same statement. So those are all collected from a few different tweets that he had on his 50, uh, his four-step stop masturbating plan. I mean, 50 Cent, you know, he's, he's like an icon, right? He's, no longer really doing the rap thing. I think he's just like kind of more behind the scenes. Um, there's a few other ones. Actually, here, here's a, 
here's a here's an actor, and it's Mark Wahlberg. Okay, so I mean, if you've not seen a movie with Mark Wahlberg, I, I don't know, I don't know how that would be possible. But you know, he's he's been around forever. He's still in incredible shape. Takes really good care of his body. He gets up at like three. He's like me. He gets up at like three thirty in the morning. Goes to the gym every day. He's just you know, I think he's damn near in his fifties or maybe even north of that now. And he just, he, he's just always, he's always been about his health, his mission, his purpose. He's just like, I have a lot of respect for, for Mark Wahlberg. So this is what he had to say. I don't get down with jerking off, dude. Look, I don't believe in, in everything that the church says. I try to do the right thing. Lead by virtue. I lead a clean and a pure life. I'm a married guy. I have a beautiful wife. Sex is not the most important thing to me. If you think that it would be his mission, okay, purpose, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's not the most important thing to me. Being horny all the time, spanking the, you know what I mean, it's not against the law. You can do whatever you want, and it's not like I shouldn't do it because of my faith. I'm just not really in into it that much anyway. So he sees it for what it is, which is just a temporary release. You know, it's it's not something that he, it, it's not what he's defined by. He doesn't let it control him. He has other things, clearly, you can look at his success, um, that, that define him, the, the things that are more important to him. He has a family, he has kids, he has a wife. I'm sure she's fucking hot, but it's just not the most important thing to him. So many guys, just like, you know, what Kanye is saying, you know, they, they're doing this to, you know, dress a certain way, to have their hair a certain way, to go to clubs, to go to strip clubs, like all this shit. And they're all doing it just to get laid. And ultimately, you know, if it's not that, then they're going to go home and jerk it. So, like, you could avoid all that and actually channel, channel that energy to, like, helping people or, you know, into, you know, building a business or, you know, channeling it into something that is about you for your mission. Uh, here's two more boxers. David Hay. I don't ejaculate for six weeks, six weeks before the fight. No sex, no masturbation, no nothing. It releases too much tension. It releases a lot of minerals and nutrients that your body needs, and it releases them cheaply. Quick fix. Releasing weakens the knees and your legs. Find a lion that hasn't had some sort of food for a while, and you've got a dangerous cat. Wow. So, there won't there won't bet a drip from me, even in my sleep. If there are girls all over me in my dream, I say to them, I've got a fight next week. Jesus, I can't do anything. I can't do it. That's control. So he's got control over his fucking sleep. That is mind over matter. I don't care who you are. That's mind over matter. You, like most people have nocturnal emissions or wet dreams when they go no pop and seam retention. He's like present in his fucking dreams. That's, that's incredible. And that's the power that you have. I've been doing that since I was 15 and it's part of, part and parcel of my preparation now. So it's just part of his, it's just normal to him now. It's part of his process. That's why I am who I am today. It's defining. It's all down to those little sacrifices. Find me another boxer who makes that sacrifice and you'll find another champion. Well, how many boxers have we covered today? I mean, you don't have to be a boxer. Look at all the other people I've covered. But here's another one in case, you know, you needed more proof. Manny Pacquiao, Pac-Man. This is what he had to say. He's an eight, eight-time world champion, right? Believing the old adage that sex saps strength. Pacquiao follows a strict no-wife policy during training. We've talked to doctors about it. Sex lowers testosterone, so you're not as mean. Most boxers abstain for a week or more before about. I ask my guys for 10 days. This is his doctor. Of course, Pacquiao beats the others even when it comes to abstinence. He stays off for 21 days before a fight, husbanding his energies into post-fight festivities. So, Jesus, I mean, you know, he's eight-time boxing world champion. He says no to his wife and, you know, he says, you know, for three weeks, I'm just gonna, I'm doing this. And this is, you know, this is what I'm going to do before all my fights. This is his preparation. Um, here's another one. Michelangelo, uh, legendary sculptor and painter, engineer. Michelangelo's contemporary, I don't know, I can't pronounce this, who was also his, oh, his biographer. 
described Michelangelo as having a monk-like chastity. So, I mean, Michelangelo, famous sculptor, painter, you know, just, he, he's well known for doing like the Sistine Chapel and like all these really famous sculptures from, you know, a long, long time ago. Um, but, you know, he was using a lot of the energy that he had because just like his biographer said, he was like a fucking monk. So, you know, he was disciplined to not, you know, jerk it all the time. Here's, uh, here's another one. So this is another athlete. This is uh, Rickson Gracie, an MMA and jiu-jitsu legend. No sex. Yeah, you know, by having sex, you waste a lot of energy. I mean, the vital energy in your body goes away. I mean, it's normal. It's something that we normally do, and it's not a problem at all. But if you want to ac accumulate energy, if you want to get full energy, you cannot waste. So I try to keep myself away from sex at least two weeks before the fight, Rickson Gracie said. A lot of athletes here. Here's another one. Uh, this is another Greek philosopher. I covered um, Plato before, but here's Socrates. Socrates first prescribes abstinence from sexual pleasure. A conventionalized treatment of his own view on sex then follows, which illustrates and amplifies the earlier summary treatment of its dangers. He makes the wrong move and finds out that through sex, that although it may be pleasurable, it makes you a slave to your desires. Wow. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, probably sounds like a broken record here, but, you know, I could, there's a couple other ones here. They're just not as, uh, you know, as famous, but I think by now you get the point. So if you, if you have not started this or you are thinking about it, let that be a record of, of the reasons why you should start and why you should be motivated to do this. It's so incredible. It, it will just, it will really radically change your life. I'm coming up on six months here. I'm a different man than when I started, um, you know, just over, uh, just under six months ago today. Uh, it's the best thing a man can do. Um, if you're having problems relapsing, again, let this list show you that when you do get disciplined about it, it gets easier and that things really stack in your favor over the long term. Don't give in to the temptations you know, reach for the stars here. Go for, go for what you want. Um, f test your limits. See how far you can really go with this. So I would love to hear your comments, your feedback. Uh, so please add them and, and share what, uh, you know, what you thought of the list. If you have anybody to add your comments and also, you know, your, your journey, please share that with us. That's really valuable for the community here. I appreciate hearing from each of you. And I hope that these videos uh, have been helping you, keep you motivated and inspired. Uh, like the video, share the video, and do share the channel with anybody that you think would be a good contributor here. Uh, we are building community here at the Main Corps. It's important that we get the word out and help other men who, who, are, uh, who are in need of uh, becoming be the best version of themselves. That's what we're trying to do here. So thank you very much, gentlemen. I will see you on the next video here at the Main Corps. Cheers.